Hey everyone, in this video I'm attempting to create some landscape Milky Way photography. So if you saw one of my recent videos, you will know that I was planning for a Milky Way shot. So I'll put a link up top to that one if you want to go back and watch it. In this video, I'm going to try and put it into action. So I've come to Gwynver Beach, I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, in Cornwall. And when it's dark, I want to get a shot pointing over that direction with the Milky Way in the background. That's the plan. It is looking like it's going to get cloudy tonight, so I might not get it tonight. Might have to wait till tomorrow or even the next day because the weather's looking a bit sketchy. But hopefully I'll get one and uh, I'll keep you posted on the process as we go along. So the Milky Way should be over there. You see I've got the night AR on using photo pills. So it should be there in the sky when I take my shot. Now we've got Senan over there and there are going to be some lights, uh, but I think it'll be okay. We are in a fairly dark sky zone. Okay, so unfortunately, as predicted, the weather is not playing ball. It's completely grey, cloudy. It's actually raining at the moment, so I'm not going to get my shot tonight. And to be honest, it's looking pretty cloudy for the next few days as well. So, I'm probably not going to get my shot here. I am moving on to another campsite next week, and hopefully it's looking like there might be one day next week when I might be able to get the shot. So, fingers crossed for that. In the meantime, I thought it might be a good time to just show you some of the gear that I'm going to be using to hopefully get my shot. So, as usual, I'll be using my Nikon Z7. This has got the 24-200mm Nikon Z lens on here, which I won't be using because that's not going to be good for astrophotography. But the Z7 itself has got a really good sensor. It's full frame. It's got a great sensor for capturing light in low light conditions, which it obviously will be. So that's going to be really good. I'm also using the Seven Artisans 10mm fisheye Z lens. So this is a 2.8 aperture that's going to capture lots of light. It's wide angle, obviously it's a fisheye, so I'm going to get a really nice view of the sky, get that Milky Way in there. It is going to get some distortion because it's a fisheye, but I should be able to fix that later if I need to. I'll be using my three-legged Thing Winston 2 tripod. So normally when I'm traveling, I would bring my travel tripod, but I think I need something really stable and solid because I've got those really long exposures. So I'm taking the three-legged thing and I'll be using this bracket on the Z7 to keep it in place. I've got this little handy warmer for my lens because when it gets cold at night, you can get dew on your lens. So you wrap this around the lens. It's USB. I'm going to plug it into this power bank and that'll keep this warm and therefore keep the lens warm and stop it getting dew on there and I've also got a head torch and I did shop around to try and find one of these that have got a red light built into it because when you're doing astro you don't want to have blinding bright lights for yourself and also if there are any other people around taking photos so as well as a uh, normal white light which I'll use when I'm hiking to my location I've also got a red light so I can use that when I don't want to be too blind in so I can still see what I'm doing but not disrupt the environment so I can still see the stars and things like that. So that's most of the things that I'm using bespoke for this Milky Way shot. I've also got other things that I normally use like my cleaning cloths and lens pens and I've got some other lenses, my bag that I use but they're all the main things that I'm going to be using for a Milky Way landscape shot. So, like I said, I'm not going to get the shot tonight or probably the next few days, but hopefully when we move on to the next location next week, hopefully I can get a shot there. I haven't spotted a location there yet. I'm going to have to get on Google Maps and find a spot to actually take my photo from. But if we can get that little window where there's no clouds, 
then hopefully we can get the shot. The moon phase, it's going to be past the new moon. We're going to start getting the moon again, but there will be times during the night where the, the moon's not visible and it's still nice and dark. And the area we're going to is still quite a dark sky zone anyway. So yeah, should be pretty good. So fingers crossed and uh, I'll keep you up to date with what we're doing as we go on. Okay, so I'm in the next location now. We're on a new campsite. We're near Goran Haven in Cornwall still. And it's been a bit frustrating because at the last place near Senon, I couldn't quite get my shot. There was, just wasn't an evening where it wasn't cloudy, basically. I think there was one evening where cloud cover got down to about 24. I did get some shots. I'll put them on screen now, but as you can see, there's just too much cloud in there and you can't see the Milky Way. You could see stars in certain locations of the sky, but where the core of the Milky Way was, it was just covered by a big mass of cloud. So I come here, I was hoping that tonight was gonna to be clear. The forecast last week said that tonight was gonna be really good. Unfortunately, it's changed and it's actually gonna be cloudy again tonight and raining tomorrow. But Thursday, fingers crossed, is looking really good. So I'm hoping that I can come down to a location nearby. This is Vault Beach. I could get my shot from here. I think from here, the Milky Way would be somewhere over there at the right time. But there's also another beach, Hemic Beach, which is over the other side, which I'm going to check out as well. So I just don't know if the weather's going to change. It's just changing so quickly. But if it stays as it is now, Thursday's my day. So that's in a few days time. So the next time you see me, we'll probably be then. And hopefully we'll get the shot. Okay, so I am just going to record one last bit actually. Andrea and Otis have gone back to the campsite and I've just popped down to Hemic Beach, which is the other beach close to our campsite. And in fact, it's a bit closer, I think. It's probably about a 15 minutes walk down here. So in the dark with my head torch, it's going to be a bit easier. And I think just over my shoulder, that's where the Milky Way is going to be in that direction. So if we just check photo pills, we've got the Milky Way going up there We've got the core. It's going to be right over there in that direction. And if I just pan left and right, you see we've got a light gray line on the left there and a dark gray on the right. So my window of opportunity to get a shot of the Milky Way is between those two lines. It starts at the light gray and it ends there at the dark gray. So between like around about nine o'clock to about 11 o'clock. So the moon is not going to have set by then, but I'm going to have to work with what I've got. There might be a little bit of moonlight. It should still be fairly dark down here, I think. I just need to go down there somewhere and uh, set up my camera with the wide angle lens and find a good composition. Okay, so if I set up somewhere down here on the beach with the Z7 and the 7 Artisans 10mm fisheye lens, I should be able to get a shot looking out over the beach at these rocks here and the cliffs. And in the sky up there somewhere, that's where the Milky Way should be between about 9 and 11 pm. So if we just click on Night AR, and then I just need to get this to the right date. 
So we'll go that way. We'll come to the 12th, which will be Thursday. And we come to around about, that's AM, so let's go to PM. So there we've got, yeah, 20 past 10 PM on the 12th. And you can see we've got that nice Milky Way core going down the middle there. So I might actually do a portrait shot for this. So I'm gonna head back to the campsite now. And this time, hopefully, if the weather plays ball, the next time you will see me, I will be down here getting my shot of the Milky Way. So <laughs> fingers crossed and I'll see you then. Okay, so I hope you can see me. I think the quality is going to be pretty bad, but hopefully you can still see me, at least hear me. I've made it down to the beach. The weather so far is holding out. It's looking pretty good, clear sky. So I'm hoping to get a shot. And I've set up down here on the beach, made sure that I'm in an area where I'm not going to get trapped by the tide. And I've got a big rock just in front of me, which is going to be central to my, or not central to my composition, but a major part of my composition. And then obviously the main part is going to be the Milky Way to the right hand side of it. The moon is out. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that. Last week when I was intending to do my shot, originally, the moon was in a new moon phase. Now it's a waxing gibbous, which is technical speak, but basically means that it's quite bright. <laughs> so it's going to ruin at the moment it's right in front of where the Milky Way would be so I can't even take a shot right now. But as it moves across the sky I'm hopefully going to get an opportunity to get a shot of the galactic centre. And then around about 12 o'clock tonight the moon will set and then it'll be out of the sky, it'll be completely dark. The only problem is the galactic core is only visible until around about 11pm. So I can still get a shot of the rest of the Milky Way, just not the big juicy bit basically. So I'm going to try and get some shots between now and 11 with the moon and then I'll wait around till 12 and get a shot of the lesser Milky Way uh, without the moon. Two advantages of having the moon are that A, I was able to get focus on it, I was able to use the moon as a point to focus in on with the magnifying buttons on the back of the camera and get really nice focus on that um, and because it's a manual focus lens that's not going to change now. I mean, if you're using an autofocus lens, turn it off, leave it in manual once you've got it set to focus. But when it's completely dark, obviously it's harder to do. You have to use a star or something. Uh, and the other thing is that it is going to illuminate some of my scene. So I won't need like a super long exposure to illuminate the foreground and things. Okay, so I've just come around the side of the rock so that it's blocking the moonlight a little bit. I'm hoping that might help. And if Photopills is right, the Milky Way should be just to the right of the moon, so just to the right of the rock. And I've oriented the camera to be portrait, so I can get more of the vertical Milky Way, because otherwise I'm just going to have a big empty space in my composition when I'm doing it landscape. So yeah, hopefully, with that rock, portrait format, blocking the moon a bit, I can get the Milky Way just to the side of the rock. Hopefully, I can't see it with the naked eye and I won't really be able to see it in the images until I've edited them. So, yeah, I'm just hoping that Photo Pills is right, really, and that's where the Milky Way actually is. So, if there's a good photo, I'll throw it up now. Okay, so the way that I'm working out my exposure time is using photo pills and I'm going into spot stars and in here I can set my focal length. So I'll set that to 
10 millimeters. So I'm using the Seven Artisans 10 millimeter fisheye lens. I'm going to set my aperture to 2.8. That's what I'm using. Declination is basically the angle. I'm not going to worry about that. If you set it to the absolute correct angle, it'll give you the optimum exposure time. But by leaving it on zero, you're kind of playing it safe anyway. So I'm just going to leave it there. Default, uh, basically I'm going to leave that on default. Uh, if you want to print, then you might want it more accurate and you can set it on that. And you'll see up in the top right, I've got it set to Nikon Z7, because that's what I'm using. And you see there that the NPF rule is 21.57 seconds. So I'm going with 20 seconds, I think that'll be okay. The 500 rule, uh, which is a classic rule that it says here fails a lot of the time, would say 50 seconds. So yeah, let's see how it works. I've just come backwards a little bit now, because I think it's a better composition. I've got the full rock in and I can still get the moon behind the rock. Hopefully the Milky Way is about there. I've got another smaller rock just down on the right hand side, which just balances the scene a bit. So I've got about 20 minutes left now where the galactic core is viewable. And after that, I'm gonna be just getting the regular Milky Way, not the core. And about 12 midnight, like I said, the moon should set, should be really nice and dark and hopefully that'll be a nice shot as well. But this is a nice composition and I think I'm still getting some of the Milky Way here with the car so I'll throw some of them up if they're any good. So it won't be long now until the moon's set, maybe about half an hour. I've left the camera in the same position as my last shot, so I can use the long exposure shot to blend with my shorter exposure of the sky. It means I just don't have to take another long exposure. Because at the moment the moon is adding a little bit of light and it's not too long for the long exposure shot. But I think once the moon has actually set and gone down, I would have to take a much longer one, probably two or three minutes. So it's good just to have it set up and I can use that previous long exposure and uh, I'll get the one of the sky when it's really nice and dark. So yeah, not long to go and we'll get that next shot. Okay, that's me done for the evening. I'm gonna head back up to the campsite now to Andrea and Otis. What I've seen on the back of the camera looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. So I can't wait to get back and edit it. You'll have seen it already. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you tomorrow and uh, finish this video off. So that turned out to be a really good result in the end. This is probably going to be quite a long video, so if you're still watching, big thanks for that. And this has been quite a frustrating video to make in a lot of ways. I've certainly got a lot of respect for landscape astrophotographers because it's so much planning and you've got to have so much patience and you're relying on the weather. And yeah, it was just a real ordeal in, in a lot of ways. But I've also really enjoyed the challenge. And because I got those good results in the end, it's been all the worthwhile. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And I did want to bring more videos from Cornwall, but because this has been so consuming and taken so long, I've only really got this one, but I might be able to make a best of, because I did take some other photos while I was there, so I might be able to make a best of video of the photos or do an editing video about the astrophotography or something. So stay tuned for those. But that's about it for this, so the usual stuff, 
massive thank you to the regulars I really appreciate it but if you are new and you want to consider subscribing you'll get to see more of this type of content so if you've liked it please do that you can click on the big red button just down there that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing there's a new video each and every week usually at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning and I hope you'll join me for the next one so until then thanks a lot everyone and bye for now